Yes. Diabetes has been a world known disease for many years, and recently we have been trying to find a better way to treat it. Diabetes remains the seventh leading cause of death in the United States. That's one every five minutes. Well, the statistics uh, around diabetes are staggering. Can you believe China has 100 million people with diabetes? India has about 68 million people with diabetes. About $14.6 billion a year. There is no cure for diabetes at the moment. In fact, we still don't know what causes diabetes. Research is critical to finding new ways and better ways to do things. In 2005, I was diagnosed with diabetes. I became one of the three million Americans with type 1 diabetes. And each year, 15,000 new kids are diagnosed just in the US. So if you have diabetes, you're not alone. If, if you do know someone who has diabetes, um, please have a conversation with them. You know, don't, don't just accept, you know, they've got diabetes and they just do their thing. Sometimes they need a bit of support and they might not ask for it. And, and you know, have a bit of, um, a bit of respect for the people that are living with it because it is certainly a 24 hour day, seven day a week disease that they never get a break from. We are trying to raise awareness for this sickness to help people with diabetes get a better treatment. You can help us by wearing blue on April 4th and by donating to www.diabetes.org. Stay informed and stay in control. That was one of the many commercials dealing with uh, diabetes. Our subject matter, of course, is called diabetes and weight, the twin sisters and everything. Um, I'm gonna start off talking about diabetes, but I guarantee you'll understand why weight gain is directly connected to it and uh, a lot of people don't know. Usually you'll find that people that have um, diabetes usually have are uh, overweight. They usually go hand in hand. Uh, they can operate separately. Let us pray before we start. Dear kind Heavenly Father, we ask you, Lord, that you may be with us as, uh, as we go into the study, looking at uh, diabetes and, uh, and weight. Give us an understanding. Help us, Lord, to see the way that you would have us to go. For we ask this prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. All right. Um, the disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from a violation of the laws of health. In case of sickness, the cause should be ascertained, unhealthful conditions should be changed, wrong habits corrected. Then nature is to be assisted in her effort to expel impurities and to reestablish right conditions in the system. Pure air, sunlight, abstinence, which is temperance, rest, exercise, proper diet, the use of water, trust in divine power. These are the true remedies. Ministry of Healing, page 127. The, um, matter of fact, I have 31 slides, and matter of fact, somebody told me that it would last two hours. I'm not going to keep you here that long. I may skip some, because there's more information than I can ever try to, you know, sort of summarize and um, before I get started, the, a lot of my information basically starts here with the Word of God. Um, Genesis 129, which I'm not going to cover, but when you get time, read it. That's God's original diet for man. And, um, and so that's actually in another presentation on why Christians get sick. This is actually the first uh, lecture on why Christians get sick, which my... Whenever I do another one, it will be called Why Christians or Why People Get Sick. And I'll go a lot more detail, but it was recommended that I do diabetes. So realizing that diabetes has a twin, I threw weight in there too, because uh, you'll see that if you get one, 
there's a good chance you can get the other also. In my, my reference books, I had a bunch of reference books, but one is Anatomy and Physiology workbook. Book. I got one for dummies because I, now I got one at home. The real thing, it is so technical, I couldn't understand it. So when I looked at the one for dummies, it was still difficult. <laughs> but it was easier, and so I had to do a little more research and some of the stuff that I'm presenting is, matter of fact, Ellen G. White says in the book Ministry of Healing that we should study uh, our wonderful bodies. And there's a reason for it and everything, in which I'll get into. The other book is the China study, which, which I'll be talking about. Um, I was telling the sister here, this is the most extensive research on health that's ever been done. This is a research on why Christians basically get sick. Matter of fact, Adventists, this guy is not Adventist. Seventh-day Adventists are in this book because we're a group of people, a lot of us are, are know somebody that are vegetarians uh, and everything, and so um, we're a group to be studied. Our twin sister, diabetes, and wait. All right, next. It says, Psalms 139, 14, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Psalms 139, verse 14. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Matter of fact, Brian had gone to, I think, Psalms 139, verses 1 through 4, and everything, but that's some powerful stuff. God, when God made us, um, well, go to the next slide. I'll, you'll see why. In Genesis 1, 26 and 29, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over all the earth. And verse 29, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which the, is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. And so here we see that we were made in the image of God. And so God, when he made man, formed us. Our qualities, our, the way we uh, are supposed to act and look is like our father and everything. And then in verse 29, God gives us the diet that we were supposed to be on. Uh, you notice I said suppose and everything, but because uh, <laughs> it's not easy. It's not easy. Uh, next what is diabetes? I'm going to jump right into it. Um, I'm going to try to, it was real hard for me not to give a lot of facts because I've sat in health seminars and I've been bored to death because it's just too many facts. What people come to seminars like this for, tell me, okay, I got diabetes. I got to wait for it. Tell me how to get rid of it. Stop eating. <laughs> That's too simple though. That's type 1 diabetes develops in children and usually referred as juvenile Onset diabetes. This accounts for 5 to 10 percent of all cases. Next. Type 1 diabetes cannot produce adequate insulin because the insulin producing cells of their pancreas have been destroyed. This is the result of the body attacking itself, making type 1 diabetes an autoimmune disease. And, uh, and that's where the body attacks itself. Matter of fact, the type 1 diabetes is started by. Um, one thing they say, milk, cow's milk is one reason, polio, and certain drugs is another one. And what that does, I can't really go deep into it, but it, what it does, it kills the beta cell. Beta cells um, is the thing that creates, um, in the pa pancreas, that creates uh, insulin. And so it, it destroys the beta cells in the pancreas. That's what milk does. I'm talking about when a, when a child is born, we give, there's a time when we're supposed to, a child is supposed to be eating food and other stuff, but we don't, we don't understand that. I didn't understand it until I was grown and gone. Luckily, a lot of people, I was raised on cow's milk. A lot of us, it doesn't affect us, but uh, it does affect, the percentage is high in everything. Type 2 diabetes accounts for 90 to 95% of all cases, which which used to be called adult onset diabetes, but today about 45% of all new cases of type 2 diabetes are children. And so now they just call it type 2. Something is happening 
to our diet that children, that did not affect children, but now uh, they didn't stop calling it adult. It's anybody, everybody. Overeating. Type 2 diabetes can produce insulin, but the insulin doesn't do its job. This is called insulin resistance, which means that once the insulin starts giving orders to, the, to dispatch the blood sugar, the body doesn't pay attention. This in, insulin is rendered ineffective, and the blood sugar is not metabolized properly. And so we have a problem. Our signs of diabetes, one of the signs of diabetes, is drinking a lot of water. Water can't get into the cells. And, there's, and that's another story. Uh, I have to stop myself from going um, off the deep end because there's another component of this. In order to get water into the cells, is you have to eat salt. Not the kind of salt you buy in the store, though, on the most part. And that's, and that's another story. Uh, if you're interested, you can check with me later, But because uh, I don't have time to, to get into it now. Let me tell you, the, I guess, an illustration or an analogy of what happens when someone has diabetes. This came directly from uh, the China study. Uh, now, this has a lot of so much research, it actually will bore you to death. But if you want to understand the body, if you want to understand what food does to your, to your cells, to your mind, uh, you need to get this book. Take your time reading it, because the research is, is deep. This guy, I mean, but it's, it's real. This is. Um, you know, it simply explains that what happens when someone has diabetes. Imagine with me that your body is an airport where food comes into the mouth as passengers. Now, I had to break it down into Steve's language because it's a little more uh, cumbersome there in the book. You know, when you eat, your food breaks down into individual units of blood sugar, and each unit of blood sugar is, is, is a passenger coming into the massive parking lot of your body. Let's just say that each unit of blood sugar drives itself to the airport shuttle parking lot. Thousands and thousands of passengers, talking about units, units of blood sugar, are waiting for a shuttle bus to come by and pick them up and transport them to where they got to go. And guess who the shuttle bus is? Insulin. There are many problems in this story of the life of, a bl of blood sugar. In type 1 diabetes, shuttle buses just don't exist. That's, the, that's why type 1 diabetes is a lot more to cure or heal. So blood sugar just accumulates in the body and causes all kinds of problems. That's type 1 diabetes. And in type 2 diabetes, there are some shuttle buses, but they don't work all the time. All right, um, next. Carbohydrates. Now I'm going to jump. I purposely had to delete a lot of my slides because, because of time. So I'm going to jump. Exactly where the problem is, uh, go back to carbohydrates. Uh, carbohydrates is the problem, and I'm going to tell you why. The, um, as a child, I was raised as on cereal in the morning time. Now, my, my parents, my mom cooked. We had eggs, grits, oatmeal, toast, uh, sausage, and that kind of stuff. But these days, we don't have time to cook. Most people don't cook anymore. And so even now, when I um, don't have time to cook Kedra breakfast, I say, go get some cereal. And then, you know, there's bread. These are things, these things are full of carbohydrates. Cereal, bread, desserts, pasta, pizza, rice, uh, potato, sugar, and uh, all all these things are carbohydrates. The problem with carbohydrates, next. What happens to food when we eat or drink? Next. It breaks down to glucose uh, in the gastrointestinal system. Uh, next. And it's sent to the liver for distribution. Now, everything runs through the liver. That's why people that... Uh, that drink and get sclerosis of the liver, they usually die soon after that because everything has to be processed in the liver. The liver sends glucose to three places. Number one, the first place that liver sends uh, glucose to is it can only enter, this is where insulin comes at. 
Does anybody remember where insulin comes, in, uh, comes from? What organ? The pancreas. Glucose can only enter the cell with insulin. And, um, and also salt. That's another thing. I can't go there yet uh, at this time. But in order to get glucose in the system, it has to have insulin. And now the purpose of, of glucose uh, is for energy. And that's what that other part is. In the, in the cell, glucose is, uh, goes through a 20-step pro uh, process or pathway, which is no oxygen, and it creates two units of energy. And then the glucose is turned into glycogon, which I didn't put that up there. That's an eight-step eight uh, pathway with, with oxygen, and it creates 36 units of energy. Now, I can't mention, I can't get into the other part. That's why fresh air and exercise are so important. That, uh, go back to the, the last. In this step, in this eight-step pathway, it requires exercise and fresh air in order to generate those 36 units of energy. Most people never get there because they, they don't exercise. They're not out in the fresh air and everything. And so they're stuck with those two units of energy. People that are there are always tired always sluggish and everything. And folks that, are, that exercise, in the beginning of, our, of the slide, I had eight health laws. And one of them, and one of them was uh, air, exercise, of course, nutrition, and all the others and everything, and sunlight. All those things are required for good health. All right, next slide. All right, the second place that the liver sends glucose is the muscle cells. Muscle cells stores glucose as glycolic. I have a hard time saying it. Gaikakon stores and is freed by, here we are again, exercise and water. And in fact, water is another one of those eight health laws. And it must, in order for glucose to get into the muscle cell, you must have insulin. And so it's very important. Uh, here you see why insulin is so important. And it sort of gives you a picture on why people with type one diabetes and type two diabetes struggle with with life, with uh, things that we take for granted. You know that people that have uh, that are diabetic have crashes. They have issues. All right, next slide. The third place that um, that the liver sends um, glucose to is fat cells. Glucose that is left mostly. Whatever's left, on the most part, goes into fat cells. This is where the problem lies at. When the, when the, cell, when the cell receives all the glucose it can, the, fats, uh, the muscle cells receive all the glucose that it can, whatever left, whatever's left goes into the fat cells. This is where the problem begins. Glucose is a warehouse that does not require insulin. Matter of fact, whatever's left, the fat cell says, come on in. I'll take whatever's left. Whatever's left, and that, think about it. All of those starches, all that sugar that we eat. Matter of fact, this generation probably eats more sugar than ever. Matter of fact, back in the Hippocrates, does anybody know who, who uh, Hippocrates is? He's the, uh, you know, the, I guess the, Doctor, doctor of all doctors and everything. The beginning, you know, he started the, this process of medicine and organized it and everything. And so, but insul, uh, diabetes did not exist back in that day, in his time because they didn't have a, a glucose or a sugar problem or carbohydrate, carbohydrate problem. Um, all the things that were on that list earlier, pizza, bread, cereal, has been processed. Uh, carbohydrates by themselves are not bad. It's when you process that stuff. Like potatoes, uh, we peel the skin off, and we put it in fat or oil, and we fry it up, and all this heat, and everything is gone. And that glucose or carbohydrate, carbohydrates is turned into glucose, and you've got a problem, and it's only adding to the fat cells, and those fat cells are getting bigger and bigger. Next slide. All right, the next player in this story, we've talked about the liver, is the pancreas makes insulin. This is where 
the, uh, this is where insulin comes from and got, and I have trouble saying these G things, glucagon. Uh, and these are hormones that are made in the, in the pancreas. The purpose of insulin is to transport and store glucose. And um, in order to bring the blood glucose level down, high glucose requires high insulin. And so I want you to imagine that in the, when somebody eats a lot of uh, carbohydrates, a lot of sugar, sweet stuff, that a lot of insulin goes into the process the purpose of, of uh, insulin is to bring the, the blood level down, is to store. It's to store it somewhere. So ins just think about it. Insulin stores uh, sugar or glucose. That's the purpose of insulin. Now, uh, glucagon, on the other hand, will increase the blood glucose level. Sometimes, if you've got too much insulin, it brings the blood level too low because it has stored, it has stored all that glucose in the cell, in the muscle, and the big warehouse in the fat cells. So the fat cells is the thing that receives most of this glucose. That's why that, matter of fact, think about it. That is the reason that people are getting bigger and bigger because of all these carbohydrates. It's not, usually the problem is not a lot of people eating a lot of sugar. It's, the, it's sugar and the other stuff that we're eating combined. Pasta, pizza. Rice, I'm talking about rice that's, that's been processed. Everything, a lot of what is on our table is processed. If you've ever gone into a grocery store, one of the best important section in the store is one of the smallest section in the store, the produce. But all this, have you ever been down the cereal aisle? A whole aisle, cereal, all kinds. But you look at 99% of it is sugar. And, it's, and sugar is broken down in so many ways that it's got sugar this, it's got saccharin this, it's got sucrose this, all sugar. All adding to this problem here. Next, uh, next slide. I'm pretty sure y'all remember Dr. Atkins in the 80s. You know, he uh, stopped the carbs, ate high fiber, three cups of vegetables, a lot of protein, a lot of fat. Now, the rest of the story with Dr. Atkins is, um, has it, anybody ever been on the Atkins diet? I know you've heard of it, but he tried it on himself first because he was overweight and sick. And so what he did, he got rid of the carbohydrates. And guess what? He started losing weight. He also had other problems, and he started putting some of his patients on it Believe it or not, their blood pressure went down, their um, diabetes problems left them. But, matter of fact, he did a study on about 28, um, 28 patients. Matter of fact, the stories, believe it or not, is in uh, the China study. This is, uh, this is from Dr. Atkins' um, website. I'm pretty sure y'all know that he did pass the complications, but they've hidden the real reasons why he died. Part of, a lot of the reasons that he, was, um, he had died from complications was because of his diet. But they're, they're trying to hide that because his books and his material are still selling and making money and everything. But the truth, the, in the China study, it talks about, um, matter of fact, Dr. Atkins did a study, a research on his own, um, on his own work and everything. And based on his work, he wrote a book and started the I guess a revolution, and but he took away the all the carbohydrates, and they had a lot of uh, a lot of fat, a lot of fiber, uh, a lot of protein, and more than anything, they reduced the calorie intake by 33 percent. If you reduce somebody's calorie intake, they will lose weight, and so all of his patients did lose weight, but the complication. He went on and studied, but when it was reported on the news and the media, this is what they don't tell you. 63, 68% of the people reported constipation. This is his study. This is not some third party. This 63% reported bad breath, 51% reported headaches, 10% noted hair loss, 
1% reported increased menstrual bleeding. Uh, in children, it was things like vomiting, vitamin deficiencies, and that's another thing with the uh, Atkins diet. You've got to take about 10 or 15, 20 pills, supplements, a lot of pills, because that diet is deplete of nutrients. It will make you sick. That a lot of people that have gone to some of these health retreats have to be taken off of, and their diets have to be completely, completely changed and everything. But there's a, I would not recommend the Atkins diet, but I will tell you that Dr. Atkins actually was a, was a genius because he went in for weight loss, and it worked. So dropping the carbohydrates is a, uh, is a good, good thing, but he does not actually address the fact that there are, there are good carbohydrates. The problem with carbohydrates is the fact that they're overprocessed and refined. So if you're going to do carbohydrates, you need to do the unprocessed uh, kind and everything. So next slide. Okay. All right. Fiber, protein, and fat. These three food groups keep food in the stomach longer. So this ideal, these are good things. Fiber, protein, and fat are essential food groups. They all, go back, uh, they all keep food in the stomach longer, uh, giving you more time to the next meal. So those things are, are good. Next slide. All right, fiber keeps food in, in the stomach because it binds up the glucose and releases it slowly. Fiber literally sweeps the food through the through the canal. So fiber helps our food to run through the system and uh, it also prevents things like cancer, constipation. Matter of fact, that's a big one, constipation and everything. Protein breaks down in the stomach and therefore keeps food in the stomach longer. Protein builds body and we cannot heal without protein. And that's another story, another presentation because we take in protein and the body breaks down protein into amino acids. Body does not, cannot use proteins in its uh, natural form. It breaks it down into the amino and Amino acids are the building block. I've always grown up hearing that protein is the building block, but it's amino acid. And the body sort of uh, reassimilates and puts things in the order that our body needs it. All right, fat keeps food in the, in the stomach by coating food, and it takes longer to process. Fat is necessary because it makes up 50% of the cell membra membrane while protein makes up the other 50% of the cell membrane. Now, believe it or not, fat, the brain loves fat. Now, a lot of times when you hear people trying to lose weight, what do they tell you to, get, uh, to stop or tell you to get rid of fat? That's wrong. The body loves fat. Now, there is good fat and bad fat, but the body loves fat, needs fat. That if you, matter of fact, you remember I said that fat is an essential ingredient that our body requires. So there's a lot of misinformation out there. Our body needs it, but that's another presentation that I can't get into it because I'm just trying to touch on that um, the importance of its carbohydrates that you need to keep in mind and why what it's doing to the, matter of fact, it was a study of this book here that you start getting into the anatomy, physiology, anatomy of the body, basically going from when you eat food on what happens to it and when it breaks down, it's the carbohydrate, carbohydrates that's dangerous for us, not fat, unless you're dealing with bad fat. All right, carbohydrate research shows that carbs are essential, are non-essential, or carbs are not bad unless it is overdone and refined. Food does play a large part in digestion, and food does play a large part in weight loss. Now, carbs are, carbs are not essential meaning that we can go through life without eating carbs. Carbs just taste good. And uh, now there are some studies that disagree with that, but basically when, um, when you look at, uh, the, there's a lot of, uh, now I guess I take that back, carbs are in vegetables, so there's, there's a lot of stuff, but it's not, it's not essential like, like the protein and the, um, and the fats and other things, and so, Carbs are, carbs are in a lot of stuff, but it's these, it's these things that I mentioned earlier that are, that are, that are, that are negative. It's the simple carbs that we don't need, the complex carbs are what we need. 
Exactly. Yeah, the carbs that are in the in the natural foods, the foods that God gave us and everything. And so, all right, uh, next slide. If someone wanted to conquer diabetes and lose weight, what would you stop? And I'm not I'm not saying this is the bad carbs uh, that we're talking about and everything. It's basically that list. If you wanna, because if you notice that the actually is the list that we had earlier with the the cereal, the bread, and things like that. If the pasta, the pizza, the things. If somebody wanted to see a drastic uh, change in their uh, in their in their weight in diabetes, it uh you'll see it quickly. It's not fat that people now. Of course, if you eat too much fat of anything, it can be bad for you. And so, next slide. All right, these are the, uh, the different, okay, you got food, protein, carbs, and minerals. I just threw that in there because veggies are high in minerals, which is another presentation. The veggies are high in protein, low in carbs. Uh, grain is high in protein and high, and, 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 high, and high in carbs. I was looking up above. All right, legumes or beans are high in protein medium to low in carbs, seeds are high in protein and low in carbs, and nuts are high in protein and low in carbs. So if you, were, if you wanted to lose weight or control your diabetes, which one would you give up? Which one up there has high carbs? Grain. Grain. All right, that goes back to that list. The bread, the pasta, um, potatoes, and I, you have to be careful with potatoes. Now, initially, if somebody wants to uh, lose weight, I would say to giving up the uh, uh, iced potato or the white potato uh, initially until you get control of your uh, of a, a weight problem or diabetes. All right. I believe that's it. All right. Let me summarize what I've been talking about, that um, the problem with, with diabetes and... Um, and weight loss is, is the intake of carbohydrates. And I'm talking on the most part the, the bad stuff. The, a lot of the stuff that's been processed, a lot of the stuff that you go in the store, it's almost like almost anything in a box or in a package has been processed unless it's in, you know, you're talking about beans or something like that, which is good stuff and everything. Um, the, I've learned over the years that there are certain ways that you should cook beans and how you should process beans. I used to remember my mom having beans and she would let it soak. Today, we don't have time to do that kind of stuff. They, she would soak beans overnight. I'm talking about dry beans. Yeah. Let it soak overnight. It takes the music out. And it takes other problems out of, that, uh, out of those beans and everything. Now people, I think, will soak them or put them or blanch them or um, cook them in the first water and they would wash the, uh, wash the beans, pour out the initial water is called dirty water. And I never did understand that. But the old folks did, because I'm old now. And so <laughs> I guess it took that for me to understand it. But back in the day, when I was young, I didn't understand it. It says, it says Mama, why are you throwing out that water? That's some good, a lot of protein and good stuff. It says some bad, that's some, she said, that's dirty water. And she would take those beans and wash them, throw that water out, wash them, rinse them, and rinse them, and rinse them. And then she would put them put those beans in the pot and then put a seasoning in, onions and garlic and all that stuff and cook it up and it was good and everything. I said, I would tell her back then, I said, I think that other water with the beans would have been better. <laughs> I didn't know, I didn't understand back in the day uh, what, she, what, she was, uh, what she was doing. But this is stuff that's been passed on. It's because we've moved to a point where we've, we've over-processed stuff and that's where the problem comes with a lot of our problems. The, a lot of the, the research and things that, uh, that we're dealing with is because, I guess a lot of it goes back to us violating these eight health laws that God has given us. You know, this basically presentation basically deals on the most part with nutrition. I touched on exercise. I didn't say a lot about water, but uh, except to mention that 
water cannot get into the cells. Insulin, I mean, so much is so, I guess, related. Then you have sunshine, temperance, air, rest, trusting God, which are things that we need to talk about eventually. That um, these little red books that um, people talk about are more important, I guess, more important to me than they were. They've been around a long time, but it's making more and more sense uh, to me in a lot of ways. The, let me tell you a story. This is a story about, uh, this is a young man by the name of Dan that went to one of our health retreats. Dan uh, had type 1 or has type 1 diabetes. And when he went to this health retreat, you know, you go into like Uchi Pines or Weemere or some of these places, a lot of times they'll put you on, uh, the first couple days they'll put you on a liquid diet, on a, a juice diet. And that's to cleanse your system. And then after a couple of days, they start, they put you on, you know, vegetables, beans, uh, fruit, and that kind of stuff. And, and in the meantime, they got you exercising. They got you out in, the, out in the yard. They got you exercising. They got you drinking a lot of water, um, stuff like that. So Dan, with type 1 diabetes, the, um, that first night, he, his blood sugar, I had to take out a lot of the, that stuff in my slide presentation, his blood sugar dropped. And so a lot of times you get real weak. I had a, one of, job I retired from, had a secretary, she had um, diabetes type 1, and she would just pass out, literally pass out. I mean, she gets so weak. And, um, and so what Dan would do, he would take a, he would take a, a lollipop and start, you know, the sugar. He needed that. Uh, that means that he, he has too much insulin in his, in his system. And so he would take uh, candy, and his blood sugar would go up, and he would get a headache. And so what was happening, first of all, if we get too low, he would crash. And then he would take the sugar, candy bar, whatever it is, and it, it would go too high, and he gets a headache. And then he would, um, but it would take care of that fainting and passing out and that kind of stuff. Now, the next night, the next day what he did, he, when his blood sugar went down, he ate an apple at night. And the apple, it took a little while to eat the apple. And so the system was able to, the body was able to process the sugar a lot slower. So it released the sugar. Remember the fiber in the apple, the skin. Fiber holds that glucose and it releases it slowly in everything. And, um, and then, and he was able to go back to sleep and he felt good. The next night, he did something different. And when his blood sugar dropped, this time, he got up, took a glass of water, he'd done 30 push-ups, and then he went for a jog. And when he came back, and this is something I couldn't get into, his blood sugar, when he tested it, was, I think his level was 3, which is too low, because I think normal is it's about 6, 7, 8, or something like that. Um, and when he came back, his, uh, his level was at, uh, at nine. And he didn't eat an apple. He didn't eat candy. Where do you think he got his sugar from? Okay, well, okay, all of that contributed. Okay, you remember the liver sends, sends glucose to three places, the cell, the muscle, and fat cells. It went into the, okay, when he exercised, it went to the muscle cell. It got the sugar out of that, pulled it out of there, because you've got to remember, uh, insulin stores it. Glucagon basically takes it out of the muscle cell or wherever and pulls it out. The reason that Dr. Atkins' um, process weight loss prop situation worked was because that if you 
put glucose or sugar in your body, the first place that the body's going to get it from is, is from what you put into your system, uh, in the blood. But if you take from carbohydrates, because it's easy to process and get it, but if you don't, eat, if you don't do carbohydrates, guess where it goes? It goes to the fat cells. That's the reason that you lose weight. So there's a process. So that's why I say Dr. Atkins was a genius. It was just how he did it. Because it actually makes you sicker in the process. If you've got a weight problem, it's better to be fat and healthy rather than small and sick. Because I've known folks that were overweight that um, I remember as a child, we used to watch a, watch a, um, a show called, I think it was, one of the characters was called Rerun, and he was a big guy. Fat Albert. Fat, uh, fat Albert. No, what's, happening? what's happening? And on what's happening, he could dance, his boy could move. You wouldn't think somebody that big could move like that, but he moved. Um, he did die later on because of being overweight and the way he ate, though. But during that show, Rerun could, he could jam and everything. And um, so that's what I mean, it's better to be big and healthy rather than be small and sick because you feel better. That's the point that I'm trying to make. And so are there any questions about anything that I'm, that I'm saying? Because this stuff floored me. You know, I thought like everybody else had. All right, if you're trying to lose weight, get off the fat. Um, I think if you overdo anything, you can, you can, you will pay the consequences. But it's carbohydrates. That's the problem. Yes. To you to access the the glucose in the in the fat cells. That's correct. That's why Dr. Atkins and and, and diets like his are effective. But it's the it's the side effects. It's the other stuff that that um, that hurts you and everything. And so um, and like I said, Dr. Atkins died of mysterious um, reasons that they're not releasing. I wouldn't release it either because it's a state of still making millions uh, and everything because uh, if the truth was known, probably folks would. Uh, but there's been people that on the Atkins diet that have gone to our health retreat and they've been taken off that stuff because they got sick. Uh, it will cause, in another lecture, you will see that some of this stuff will cause you cancer and other problems, it, it just complicates your life. Any other questions? Okay, what's happening with uh, people that have diabetes, drink a lot of water, is that the body is drinking all of this water to get rid of that glucose after them going into the cells, into the muscles, into the fat cell, you still have access. So the body needs water to get rid of it, so you, it goes out of your system. You urinate it out of your system. You, have, you may have heard there's a name for it. All I think of is sweet urine. Uh, all of that glucose that's floating around comes out in the urine and everything. So people have to drink. That's one of the signs that if somebody has diabetes, they're drinking a lot of water, but the problem is the body is not able to, uh, the cells are not able to take the water in. And so you've got, pro there's a lot of problems and complications. So there's a presentation that I have, well, really is in my head. I haven't gotten it out and spit it out yet. Uh, this presentation I had to struggle with because, first of all, there's just too much information to try to consolidate it into a format that people will sort of understand. Um, uh, plus, when I first encountered this stuff, I says, wow. I says, it's no wonder that people are getting sick. People that are on diabetes, remember in the commercial, one thing that the doctor said, there's no cure for it. That's not true. There's, it's not true. The, now, 
as a presenter, I cannot get in front of you and tell you that I, will cure, I can cure you. They can take me to, to jail. If I was a doctor, they would take my, if I was a, a medical missionary presenting this somewhere, they could take me to jail. Only a doctor can basically say that I can cure you, and usually they don't use it because they know better. They know that the drugs they administer and the treatment they give you. Cancer, uh, the radiation does not cure you. The surgery that they do does not cure you. It basically, you know, the surgery just takes out the tumor and everything. Radi radiation and chemo kills the, the cancer cells, but it also kills whatever is around that cancer cell, and that's why people get sicker. And, uh, and basically, they'll tell you the same thing about cancer. There's no cure for it. The people that have gone to these, gotten on these special diets and everything that um, have, been, have walked away from it. Um, but the, the normal way that, that medicine is, treats us pretty much keeps people sick. And that's kind of unfortunate that, uh, because drugs don't, don't heal. Um, and it, that God gave man a lifestyle, a diet that will change our lives and everything. And so that's something that we need to keep before us and everything uh, that, the, you know, this generation, I think we know probably less about, about this stuff than any other. And, you know, we have folks like Dwayne Lemon and some of these others that come around, but these guys only come around every once in a while. We almost need to keep them here, you know, so that we can be sort of, um, and that's what sort of me and Gracie are going to be working on, trying to bring something on a more regular basis to help, to help our, our folks and ourselves to, to have more energy to the ailments that we have. You know, we're just as sick as anybody else, as the world and everything, and that shouldn't be. God has given us the health message, but if you don't use it, uh, you know, you're gonna, we pay the price and everything. Any other questions or? That's right. Right. And that's a problem being sick. You don't feel like it and everything. And so, but if you understand the eight health laws, exercise is not optional. It's required. So what I'm saying is that even if you're tired, even if you're tired, you've got to, matter of fact, there's exercise. We've got some folks that are in wheelchairs. One of my presentations is that if exercise is required, even if you in a wheelchair, you may not be able to run, you may not be able to walk, but you can, you know, lift your arms, you can, your legs, or do, there's things that you can do uh, and everything. Matter of fact, I think uh, we've got a couple of our guys, I think Roy and, and Darius are supposed to be working on a program, exercise program for, for the church. All right, all right. Uh, I know that I, I was working in an area where we had people that uh, were unable to, what they would say, they don't want to go down to ex uh, physical, ther physical activity therapy. therapy. We had, uh -huh. had activity in the facility where I worked. And uh, I would encourage them anyway. I'd get them out the bed, put them in a wheelchair, bring them on down. Once they got that with other people, they became more, in, uh -huh, more involved in it. And I was told you can move your arm, move your neck, move your legs. And uh, even the guy that had one leg, I smoothed a good leg. I moved a bad leg. That's I don't right. have one, you know, but he had a stump. And I encourage him. And uh, sometimes it takes a lot of encouragement to get people to do things that they think they can't do. But right. exercise really helps your mind, too. It does. That's all I have to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I guess the, the beauty of it is that everything is connected. I've, in my study, I've been studying this stuff for three years now, over three years. Now, I've probably been living it for about over 20 years, but uh, I've actually begun understanding the whys. I used to read uh, a lot of Ellen G. White's books, but I said, you know, she talked about we need to study the, the anatomy. I said, I don't need to know about the bones and, and the, 
liver and the pancreas and everything, but it's all connected. It's all connected because failure to do one thing can lead to other things. And matter of fact, it blew my mind that I wrote, I wrote uh, read in one of the little red books, one of her books, that the eight health laws is comparable or equal to the Ten Commandments. And you think about it that, you know, in James 2.10, it says if you break one, you break them all. It's the same thing with these eight health laws. If you break one, you may do seven of them, but you break one, you still lose. You still lose because they're all connected. And, in, and they're connected in a way that you don't, something as simple as water that you think about, you couldn't blink. Your brain, uh, sometimes when your brain, because people don't drink enough water, they don't they dehydrate, they can't think properly because the brain is over 70, 80% water and everything. Our bodies are mostly water, our, even our bones. We, I mean, that's necessary. The sun, we should be getting at least 15 minutes of sun every day. Uh, I mean, it's uh, vitamin D, vitamin C, and everything, but it's all, all of that is connected, so we, we need it desperately. Yes, ma'am. I would like to tell everybody, I go to Prattville. There is spring water, totally clean doesn't cost a dime. All you have to do is bring your container. And that's what I use for coffee. Uh, well, I, I don't drink that much coffee anymore because I learned it in here. It's not good. Amen. But tea and, you know, <laughs> cook for totally free. And most people don't know that. I think I've had some of that water, and it's, it's good. It's, uh, it's better than the water that you... Uh, you can get out of the store. And it's free, as she says. Wow. <laughs> Just take your jug. All right. Uh, if that's it, uh, matter of fact, the, I guess it'll be announced when another presentation will be. Now, probably if I do another one, it will be, like I said, why we get sick. And it's going to deal with some other things. But we will, I think me and uh, Grace were talking about at some point in time, we do need to deal with the eight health laws to put it all together. That, um, and maybe the time when we do the exercise, tie it in when Roy and Darius can, at that time, maybe that week or sometime, we'll have all of it coming together. Yes. Yes. You know, that's been around a, a little bit. You remember Dr. Jackson? He was here at the church years ago. Dr. Jackson, I think he has, his is God's, God's plan. Basically what he did, he flipped his because he put God first, which here is at the bottom. But it, basically, this will stick in your mind. New Star will stick in your mind better than godly plan. Plus, it, it follows the, you know, the first letter, nutrition, exercise, water, water sunshine, temperance, air. Rest, trust in God and everything, which is, you know, all of it's, all of this came from God. So this is, this is actually powerful stuff. We can actually change the, um, matter of fact, the living this kind of life, if all God's people lived this, this way, we would be the healthiest people in the world. You wouldn't even need a doctor except for a checkup or a, uh, or something like that, or if you broke an arm, then you would need help. But as far as all this other stuff, you'd be telling the doctor, says, whatever you're doing, matter of fact, I would go into the doctor. My doctor says, Steve, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Don't stop in everything. Uh, and he was younger than, my, than I was, and he had just had a heart attack and everything. And he said, Steve, I need to be, and he was overweight. He said, Steve, whatever you're doing, I need to be doing it. I said, but I know you're a vegetarian, so I can't do that. He says, I love my steak and everything. I says, well, <laughs> I says, go for it. I says, I bet it tastes good. I, re I, leave it in, I still remember that a, what a, a steak tastes like. Uh, but, you know, there's stuff out there now that you can, that's real close. That's right. <laughs> and fake meat, that's right. <laughs> I like my fake, fake meat and stuff like that. Um, 
Ma tofu eggs and stuff. <laughs> All right. Well, well, uh, we're going to have prayer. Um, matter of fact, since Grace, you got the mic, I'll get you to have our closing prayer. <laughs> I would like to thank everyone for coming, and I hope that we all learn something that we can take away for ourselves or share with someone else. Let's bow our hands. Father, thank you so much for your love and your goodness that you bestow upon us day by day. Thank you that we had time to come here together and to learn, and I pray that you will keep the things that we discuss in our mind and help us to want to live a better life and healthier life. If we're going to be alive, we might as well be healthy so we can be busy about doing your will, and that is to lead others to you, oh God, so that we can all go home and be with you forevermore. I pray that you'll be with us as we go our separate ways. Uh, give us strength. Give us power. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much.